Do you, uh, would you like to do a Q? Would you like to do a Q and A session? Yeah, yeah, right. That's what we'll do. Yeah. Um, right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is the part of the evening, right, where we. Where we're doing just a Q, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> or just a Q. There'll be a Q over there. You want them both? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, if you want to raise your hands, I'll come and swing this mic towards everybody and you can ask. Colin, your uh, your questions that you've always wanted to ask him, so I shall just come over here. What is your name, sir? Jason. Hello, Jason. What is your uh, question, Colin? Colin, do you like any other science fiction besides Doctor Who? I love it! It's Star all that is worth reading, in my opinion. Are you a big Star Wars fan? I wouldn't say Star Wars particularly. Star Wars is a bit kiddie for me. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Star Wars fan. Are you a Star Wars? I mean, I quite like it, but, you know, Star Wars is something I've watched again and again, whereas something like The Matrix is. Oh, yeah. um, I've watched that kind of three or four times each film. Star Wars I've seen probably twice each film. I guess that's a test in terms of films. Yeah, what? Yeah, what's back again? What? Yeah, what's back again? Who's back again? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> I say go back watching it again. Oh, go back, go back watching it again. Um, I read a lot of science fiction. Um, I should think about seven out of every ten books I read is probably sci-fi. Um, I just like it, really, because it's, it's not too boring like other stuff about <laughs> it's your What's your people, favorite? people having a horrible time in the mines in, in Ukraine, you know. It doesn't do it for me. People sapping through space and blowing up planets, I like that. <laughs> what's your, what's your favourite sci-fi? My favourite sci-fi? Yes. Film? Adventure film? The Matrix has got to be up there, yeah. actually. I, like, I thought The Matrix was great. I like, I like stuff you can't really understand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you sort of understand The Matrix, but not completely. And I like that. Um, like I'm enjoying Heroes for the same reason. Yeah. Are you watching the new series? Yeah. It's really good, isn't it? <laughs> Is everyone up to date? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to spoil it if I say, guess who Siler is really? Does <laughs> that spoil it for you at all? Is that, did you watch that? Yeah. And Siler yeah. is, you know, brother of, yeah, ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. No, I think uh, Heroes is fab. What else do I like? Um, uh, I like the Thomas Covenant books, have you read them? Yes. Uh, possibly my favourite. I actually met Stephen Donaldson at a convention in America who wrote the Thomas Cumberland books and the, um, the other books he wrote. Um, the Gap. The Gap series. And uh, I found out that he was there, so I sent a message saying, oh, I'd really like to meet Stephen Donaldson because I'm a great fan. And at the same time, as at literally the same time, he sent a message saying, I'd love to meet Colin Baker because I'm a great fan. <laughs> so the two of us had breakfast together and we went, ooh, I think you're great. <laughs> I mean, he was going, hey, I really think you're great. <laughs> um, and he, he actually dedicated one of the, the Covenant books to me. Really? On the dedication page to Colin Baker. And he says, Colin Baker, who knows how much good he did me. It turns out that he was going through a tough time with the divorce and all that, at the same time as my doctor who was showing on American television. And he, he, he watched it and it made him feel cheerful and happy. So he kind of likes me. <laughs> Which is really nice because I think someone who can create uh, a world of science fiction. I mean, all we do as actors interpret, but the writers, they're the guys who actually create it from nothing, from their imagination. And I've got vast respect for them. And that's, for me, that's what's so good about the new series is that the writing has really moved up a notch. People are like, I'm so glad Stephen Moffat's the man they've chosen to go with. Because the stuff he's written, for me, is the best. And I think the best Doctor Who story ever is uh, the Doctor Dances two stories, the gas mask one. Wow. And when he said, uh, at the end of that, uh, everybody lives, I got shivers down my spine. And I don't often get that watching things. And it, it gave me that. I just thought it was the essence of what Doctor Who was about. So I'm excited about the future. And if they recast it with me... <laughs> well, come on, why does he have to regenerate? Can't he degenerate? <laughs> if he degenerated, he could become me. I thought of that today, I'm quite pleased with that. Because <laughs> everyone says, yeah, what do you mean? Like? Well, you, you, can't, you can't have me kind of, you know, coming back because I just don't look the same 25 years later. 
but if it degenerated, you know, I could have kind of turned into a gibbering old fool like I am now. <laughs> and it would sort of work. So I'd, I'd vote for that. Well, we'd get a couple of reps out of it, couldn't we? <laughs> have, we um, have we got any more? I know there's a chat about Sorry, am I boring you? No, not at no. all. No, no, no. No, we, um, we're just going to have Q&A. Did you want to ask a question? What's your name? There you go. Uh, as a sci-fi fan, uh, do you believe in like, this life in other planets? Do you believe there's life in other yeah, planets? Yeah, of course. Well, look, uh, it would be it would be so big-headed not to to think out of the billions of stars with billions and billions of planets, we are the only thing there is. It's ludicrous. It's so big-headed. You know, we're so important that we're the only ones in the universe. It must, there must be. I mean, I have absolutely no, no doubt whatsoever that there is life on other planets. But I've also got no doubt whatsoever we're never going to find out. Because, you know, science is science is science and we'll never get there. So, unless they can find a way of shifting us from one place to another across billions of light years in, le in, in less than a lifetime. Sounds <laughs> the TARDIS would, of course, do it. They <laughs> do it very well. <laughs> However, it's not real. <laughs> Sorry, but we're out of the watershed. There are no children here. I have to tell you, it's not. Father Christmas is. <laughs> fairies are. But the TARDIS is a wooden blue box with nothing in it. In fact, the one that I had to get into when we were on location was a wooden blue box that was made of polystyrene and, uh, and bits of wood that they weighted down in case it blew away on the coast. <laughs> it had no floor to make it easy to carry, and the crew used to go and wee in it. <laughs> so Nick, Nick and I would take a deep breath before we went in, <laughs> shut the door, we capped the three and run out again. <laughs> That is the glamour of show business. That's the reality. That's the reality. The one in the studio was all right. That was because uh, they had loos in the studio. <laughs> on the beach at Brighton, they didn't. Well, I suppose the whole of the beach at Brighton is a loo in one way. <laughs> right, we have. What's your name there? We've got another question. Hello. Julie. What's your question? Hello, Julie. How are you, Chuck? All right, thanks. Hi. How are you? I'm all right. Good. What Fine, do you think on. of your five-inch figure? Is it only five inches, man? Now, now. I have a call to discover my fair is only five inches. How big is Tom's? It's the same. No, they haven't made anything yet. Yes, they have. Yes. It's just that nobody buys it. So, is your I know. I think it's oh, one. Of, all those oh. years of being the doctor, everyone thought it was a load of crap. Um, uh, fortunately, uh, well, thank you. Which one of you, anyway? Um, I, I suppose Big Finish has redeemed me a bit, the opportunity to show a bit more about my doctor. But uh, the knowledge that my uh, action figure is outselling. Peter and Tom <laughs> delighted me until I realised what it is. You like bright colours, don't you? <laughs> it's, that's a pretty one, I'll buy that one. So actually the costume has worked for me at last. Because I get 0 0.001 of a penny for each one, you see. So when they sell a thousand, I get ten pence. <laughs> so keep buying, folks. Because it's the bright colours, isn't it? It's a pretty one. Because it looks nice. It's not because Colin Baker was such a nice man, I'm going to buy his act. It's the body. It's the body. <laughs> well, so is it, how much do, do they have to pay to get them? How much are they? £13. Uh, £8.99. £8.99. Well, you can get the real thing for a tenner. <laughs> 